appropriate versus inappropriate pain management. The symptom pain is often regarded as the fifth vital sign. For centuries, blood pressure, pulse, respiration and temperature have been regarded as the basic four vital signs which provide a simple baseline compass to determine if a patient is ill. Pain is equally as important. Pain should be described as acute or chronic, mild, moderate or severe, neuropathic or nociceptive. Pain affects mood, activity, appetite, sleep, hygiene, and the ability to focus and concentrate, all of which impact the patient's quality of life. Pain scales are useful diagnostic and therapeutic indicators. They are helpful in determining efficacy of therapeutic modalities. In unconscious patients, or those requiring respirators who are unable to speak, pain is determined by closely monitoring the patient's other four vital signs, as well as behaviors, such as their level of agitation, irritation, and restlessness. The pediatric pain scale is comprised of six pictures with facial expressions, the first being a happy expression and the sixth describing a grimacing face suffering from intolerable pain. In conscious adult patients, the subjective pain level may be objectively measured by using a scale of 0 to 10, with the number 0 meaning no pain, and a score of 10 representing the worst level of pain imaginable. The physician who is treating the patient with controlled drugs should also note in the medical record whether the patient knows about or has received complementary or alternative pain therapies such as acupuncture, TENS, manipulative and physical therapy, biofeedback, psychological counseling, and spiritual intervention. The Federation of State Medical Boards model guidelines for the use of controlled substances for the treatment of pain has been adopted by most states. The guidelines distill safe opioid prescribing into seven concise principles, namely, number one, patient evaluation, including the establishment of a patient-physician relationship. Number two, treatment plan that is tailored to the patient's medical condition. Number three, informed consent and an agreement or contract for treatment. Number four, periodic review of the pain treatment with assessment of clinical outcome, be it beneficial or not. Number five, consultation with pain specialist when needed. Number six, medical records should provide adequate documentation and number seven, compliance with controlled substances laws and regulations. The treating physician or practitioner has the duty and responsibility to provide the patient with appropriate pain management in accordance with published and peer-reviewed guidelines for the treatment of pain. There are four main categories which are considered inappropriate treatment of pain. Number one, non-treatment. Number two, under-treatment. Three, over-treatment. And four, continued use of ineffective treatments. Inappropriate treatment of pain is considered by the state medical boards as representing a departure from standards of practice. Allegations of inappropriate pain treatment by any party are investigated by the boards. In doing so, the state board will take into consideration a number of things that deal with pain management, including current clinical knowledge and scientific research, medical practice guidelines, use of pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic modalities, and expert review, for example, by board-certified pain management specialists. 
inappropriate pain treatment may result from physicians lack of knowledge about pain management and fears of investigation or sanction by federal state and local agencies the physician who is treating pain appropriately and vigilantly should be able to determine whether the patient's pain medications are causing tolerance physical dependence addiction pseudo addiction and possible controlled substance abuse by the patient at the federal level the drug enforcement administration is the federal regulatory agency that administers federal laws maintains opioid records registers health professionals sets quotas and enforces violations of the controlled substances act the controlled substances act was upheld by the US Supreme Court in the case of US versus Moore in 1975 the court stated that if physicians have licenses from the drug enforcement administration they can be prosecuted when their activities fall outside the usual course of medical practices at the state level the attorney general may prosecute criminal activity of physician offenders the state medical board and the state health care authority may impose severe civil sanctions on physicians who are treating patients inappropriately for pain medical offices or facilities which utilize controlled substances for pain management should adopt a clinic pain policy regarding the use of controlled substances that is committed to improving the quality of and access to appropriate pain care they should avoid under treatment and they should address concerns about abuse and diversion of controlled substances such clinic pain policies provide physicians and their staff with a template regarding the appropriate management of pain in compliance with applicable state and federal laws and regulations thank you